charge of malicious communication, construction of the new BWA headquarters almost complete, and in sports, the worst fears are realized as an Australian batsman succumbs to his blow from a bouncer. With the compliments of Globe Finance, those are the headlines of tonight's edition of the Evening News, next on CBC. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. A very good evening to you. I'm Pearson Bowen. The 39-year-old man charged for a message he posted on social media, which police say was menacing in character, had his day in court to face the offense of malicious communication. Police say Omar Sean Watson's post reportedly caused Minister of Transport and Works Michael Ashley annoyance, distress and anxiety. Investigations by lawmen led to Watson's arrest. Watson turned up at the Bridgetown Magistrates Court this morning, along with journalists covering the case. But he was told the case was being heard at the Oystins Court before Chief Magistrate Pamela Beckles. When he made his appearance before Magistrate Beckles, the case was adjourned after just after 10 minutes, with Watson being granted bail in the sum of $5,000. Watson, who's being represented by attorney at law Douglas Trotman, is to reappear in court on the 16th of February next year. The man held in connection with last Saturday's fatal stabbing at Half Moon Fort St. Lucie has been remanded to prison. He is 36-year-old Hammond Tennyson Hines of Crab Hill, St. Lucie. Hines appeared in the whole town court yesterday to answer the charge of murder. 49-year-old Martin Graves succumbed to his injuries just outside of the market facility he frequented. The construction of the new headquarters of the Barbados Water Authority is almost complete. Minister of Water Resource Management Dr. David Estwick revealed this building is about 75% complete and should be finished by April next year. The BWA is also implementing the Barbados Water Supply Network Rehabilitation and Upgrade Study. And a number of other projects are planned that are now in the preparatory stage. These include the Bell Desalination Plant, which will treat a portion of the water pumped from the well at that location and blend the treated water with the remainder before it goes into supply. The objective is to ensure that the nitrate levels in the water supply remain below the WHO standard of 10 milliliters per liter. The West Coast Source Project that I spoke to and the installation of a number of information and communication technology systems. According to Dr. Estwick, a non-revenue water study was conducted by a private company and another will be undertaken by a consultant from the Inter-American Development Bank in early December. The results of these studies will be used to determine the implementation of further organized and comprehensive approaches to non-revenue water matters in Barbados. This will include the establishment of a dedicated non-revenue water unit in the Barbados Water Authority and the pursuit of a more comprehensive main replacement program. A comprehensive management and operations audit has been conducted into the Barbados Water Authority. Chairman Dr. Atley Brathwaite says a study is being reviewed and the results will be made available soon. His comments came as groundbreaking was broken for the Package A component of the Water Sanitation and Systems Upgrade Project at Foursquare St. Philip. Recommendations in that report address a number of areas including, among others, supply coverage, customer service, technical operating efficiency, commercial operations, water quality, information and financial management, and the organization structure. These recommendations will be assessed in detail and implemented where possible towards the improvement of the BWA operation. Dr. Brathwaite also revealed that the BWA is working to improve its customer service. The Barbados Water Authority has also been paying attention to its customer service and will be increasing its public relation to ensure that it is understood that the company is not sitting on its laurels, but is making a valiant effort to improve. More news ahead in just a moment, but now we want to hear from you on this question. 
Do you believe improved facilities at the BWA will lead to increased efficiency at that utility company? Text yes or no to the short code 8111. The results are coming up at the end of the news. Dear Clark, I've made a fascinating discovery. The institutional water cooler. Its gravitational pull sucks people from their workstations at the busiest times of day to stand around it and chat about emerging global trends like, will pink be in fashion next season? <laughs> Meanwhile, the world slows to a stop as it waits in line to be served. I don't see that trend at Globe Finance. Globe Finance. Think outside the bank. When it comes to their financial service, slow is out, swift is in. I don't care. He looked real bad. I thought he had his. I'm scared. It's just so hard to accept. Don't be afraid. Is she mother fall? It doesn't matter, mommy. I love you. You can't play with me. You can't get it so. You can still talk with her. I will be there for you. No matter what, I'm still your dad. Fight it, not me. Reminisce and bring back the memories. Comey presents Wrap Yourself from the Side. Saturday, November 29th at Kensington Oval from 9 p.m. Come to Wear your national colors and celebrate your nationhood with the Troubadours International. Promise, Mr. Dale, Richard Stout, Tony Grisette, Carolyn Leacock, and from New York, Lou James Curtin. Tickets on sale at Ticket Pal Box Offices at $48. Get your early bird and board member tickets at $40. Wrap yourself from the flag, a night of patriotic nostalgia. Barbados has been asked to prepare and present its portfolio of projects for support through the Green Climate Fund. It follows a just-concluded high-level pledging conference in Germany earlier this month, which raised about $9 billion in pledges from donor countries. The news from Minister of the Environment and Drainage, Dr. Dennis Lowe, during a press conference. We are ready. A number of our projects are already in place, including projects from the Coastal Zone Management Unit, um, especially on the eastern side of the country to do some shoreline rehabilitation and to do some reef protection work in that area. Uh, another area, of course, is the whole matter of the West Coast and, and, the, and the, the reefs there and their habitats um, that has been showing some tremendous um, evidence of, of stress, um, bleaching, and, uh, and, and death, uh, frankly speaking. And uh, we, we have designed a reef habilitation project to address some of the challenges there uh, on the West Coast. Well, some of those projects, according to Minister Lowe, are designed to reverse the degradation of and replenish some of the reef systems. And once reefs are, are damaged, it means that you run the risk of having significant beach damage as well, because of course, um, the, some of the inhabitants of the, of, the, of the reefs are the sand producers. Um, for the for the coastline, so so once you get that that um, heavy um, attack on the reef systems, you will inevitably have a problem with some of the fish, like the parrot fish, and chubs, and other other fish families that live uh, in the reef systems. More efforts are being placed for children to practice good eating habits, and the Children's Community Health Club is doing all it can in this regard. Director of the Community Health Club. Beverly Johns says the first initiative is to educate students about their digestive system. This term we'll be discussing the digestive system. Now the digestive system is very important when it comes to the, um, what the children eat in terms of diseases developing. So we, I found that was the first thing I wanted to cover the children because I know that if they learn to eat well, if they understand how the digestive system works, they eat better, then they'll avoid a lot of non-chemical diseases. And really what we want to do is avoid this project, this whole project is really to help implement strategies to prevent non-chemical diseases in children across Barbados. Ms. John says her main goal, however, is to spread health education in communities. 
my desire next summer, I'd like to have seven more um, um, community centers. If, if the CDD gives me permission to have seven more um, community centers, I want to really reach the poor communities across Barbados. My goal is to reach poor communities because I believe that education is a way to help prevent non communicable diseases among children. Because you know, we are seeing children with diabetes, we're seeing hypertension, cardiovascular problems, diseases that we only saw in adults at one time. So, right now, the idea is that if I can educate them to make right choices, then I know the job is pretty much almost half done, as long as they make those right choices. Young people in Barbados have found a new way to spread the Barbadian culture. They've done it by creating a monthly digital publication. Publisher Kishmar Shepherd says Barbadian culture will be transmitted mainly through video. Mr. Shepherd says he started the project to showcase what Barbados has to offer. I came up with Bimrock Magazine because I wanted to do something impactful for Barbados, and I believe that we don't see we don't see ourselves in a positive light enough. So this is my way of showing Barbadians how beautiful and how special Barbados really is through our music, our fashion, our food, our culture, and of course our parties. Meanwhile, Minister of Culture, Sports and Youth Stephen Lashley is proud of the young people for taking such an initiative. I am very, very excited to be a part of this initiative and I share the passion and the excitement of our aspiring young uh, Barbadian entrepreneurs who have dared to step out uh, and to find a place that I'm sure will take them uh, many, many places as they continue to build their business. Barbadians are being advised that there will be no garbage collection on Monday, the 1st of December, and it's being observed as a national holiday. In addition, Public Relations Officer at the Sanitation Service Authority, Carl Padmore, is advising that all cemeteries and the landfill at Mangrove Pond at Vaucluse will also be closed on that day. However, he's given the assurance that under the new routing system being rolled out by the SSA, Garbage collections will resume during the remainder of the week. Mr. Padmore has also apologized for delays in the service, which occurred as a result of heavy rainfall last Friday, Thursday and Saturday, noting that the authority is working to regularize the situation. Regional news next, but first a reminder that 